exactly right, Tyler. And so there are a number of, of let, let me, somewhat idiosyncratic factors that I think could lead to at least some moderation in the rate of decline. And again, as you said, what we're talking about here is just the pace of decline, not whether or not cord cutting is continuing and whether or not uh, it, the, the, the trends will, will generally stay in the same direction. But first you have, remember, the cable industry is losing subscribers at about 2.5%, but the satellite industry is losing subscribers at north of 10%, so four times faster. And you're starting to see signs that at least for the satellite industry, things may be bottoming out. Now, it looks like DirecTV will continue to be bad and maybe even get a little worse, but the worst seems to be passing for Dish Network. And again, not saying they're not still declining. They're clearly still declining, um, but they are starting to decline at a somewhat slower is, rate. Is this because the people who were inclined to cut the cord, whether it's satellite or cable, that... that a high percentage of them may already have done so? Well, I, there are a couple of factors here. Um, one is for satellite, um, yes, it may be that what you were seeing was in part a number of, of relatively fickle subscribers who had been attracted by short-term promotions and are running off. It's also the case that as satellite loses more and more subscribers, what's left in their subscriber base is more and more rural and has fewer options mm -hmm. for cord cutting. And therefore, it gets a little bit stickier. And again, all we're talking about is relatively modest changes here on the margin. If you're a cable uh, programmer, an ESPN or, or a CNBC, I would think that there are ways... You can insulate you, if you have if you have a loyal audience, as for example we do, uh, and many do. There are ways you can insulate against cord cutting. You can raise rates if your viewership is maintained. Uh, that you know you can you can blunt the fact of the the falling number of subscribers. If you are, however, a cable company, a Comcast, our parent, uh, a Charter, for example. Uh, what, are you, what are your options to combat this loss of subscribers? Is it that you charge more for broadband or you find different revenue streams uh, to derive from pay-per-view or, or things like that? How do, you, how do you blunt it? Well, that's an interesting question, Tyler. You know, I think for, for the cable operators, and then we'll come back to the programmers in a second. For the cable operators, what's interesting is they don't actually care that much anymore if you cut the cord, because the truth is video is not terribly profitable for them anyway. You know, I always use the analogy that cable companies are not media companies. Cable companies are infrastructure providers. And it's a bit like saying we're in this transition from gasoline-powered cars to electric cars, and therefore we're not going to need roads anymore, right? It's a non sequitur. These guys are not in the, the car business. They're in the road business. And you need a road either way. So the cable companies are going to be fine. And in fact, in my experience over the last year or so, cable investors have gone from being nervous about video cord cutting to being comfortable about video cord cutting to actually hoping video cord cutting is faster because it accelerates margin expansion at the cable companies. So it's been a real evolution. And, the, and, and then you were going to transition very quickly to the, to the program providers, uh, whether it's Disney or... Uh, NBC Universal, whomever. That's right. And that's a very different story. And I think you're seeing the world divide into two camps. The camp, like yourselves at CNBC or you mentioned ESPN, the live programming that needs to be consumed live is staying within the bundle. I think what's really happening and what's driving cord cutting is that the entertainment-only customer who isn't interested in sports is defecting entirely to subscription video on demand, things like Netflix and increasingly it will be Disney Plus and that sort of thing. That is very threatening for entertainment-oriented cable networks, less threatening for sports and news-related.